adventure for years and years and years and years. And certain souls are like more empathic and they feel the pain of the world more than others. And so mm -hmm. they're the type that are more easily broken. Mm -hmm. uh, that's me. <laughs> yeah. So it's like very hard sometimes when so much around you um, is just not going right, you know, whether it's uh, in your own personal life or worldwide. And it's just so easy to fall prey um, mm -hmm. to also a lot of um, scrutinization by oneself that uh, is really based on false notions and not at all based on truth not at all based on the human condition so um and when you're kind of in the midst of this this like fog and blog and like a, a brain fog you want to call it whatever it is like you need quick sos fast tactics to get yourself out of that state <laughs> yes there's a long-term day by day continuous service that we need to do like there's a lot of brain training techniques to like really change and rewire your your neural pathways and declog your brain from all traumas and all that is amazing and it must be done because that's the long haul that will get you to the greatest of heights but there are quick sos what can i use like right now to like help me jumpstart and get out of the funk. And uh -huh. I like to start, but I really um, I would like to see, just uh, say hi to Karen here and um, thank her for her persistent victory energy of, uh, you know, going out there and doing what she can to put these forums together and to put women together and supply the tools constantly on a daily basis to so many around the world. So Kolakavod, Karen, and for um, Hashem for connecting us and for all of us being able to share uh, time together in your schos and all that you're doing. And I'm so Thank happy. Thank you. Amen, amen. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you all for joining us today. Such a nice group of women here i'm sure it's hard in the middle of your day thank you so much for coming on and for joining and i'm um, really really glad to be here it's been a while since i've been uh visible like this and uh it was hanukkah it was busy time busy season Hashem, and we felt that we wanted to take from the light of hanukkah and to spread more light and bring more light into the world and give more chizuk to everyone we need the chizuk as well. And uh, yep, yep, Mary yep. and I were chatting and we just wanted to, you know, to give you some some of this, uh, to continue some of the light, some of the inspiration, Bezlat Hashem, and to give us the tools to be victorious. The Maccabim were victorious. The Maccabim were all, uh, Baruch Hashem, were able to succeed in uh, in giving so much chizuk to all of Lami so I look for so many generations. They were rabim biyad matim biyad rabim, right? Little ones in the hands. Rabim biyad matim, excuse me. The many in the hands of the few, and giborim uh, biyad chalashim. They didn't look like they were going to be victorious. They were, you know, weak in power, weak in, you know, in their strength, small amount of people. But yet, what did they have? They had tremendous emuna, and that's the koach of us women is that we have emuna and we have bitachon. So Bezrat Hashem, today, may we get the tools to be able to utilize them and, mm -hmm. and help us to grow and help us to, you know, to, to face the challenges that we have on a daily basis, Bezrat Hashem. So I welcome nice. all of you to today's event. It's right after Hey Tevet. Maybe you want to talk a little bit, Miriam, about that. And I want to introduce my dear friend, Miriam. Miriam Yerushalmi is a powerhouse. If everybody could just mute themselves. Miriam Yerushalmi is my dear friend and we connected just by because we wanted to be able to connect with inspiration to chizuk to others and uh, chazde Hashem that uh, we've done a few events together and we're looking forward to do many more and she just she's continuously writing books lecturing all over the place she has a few whatsapp groups uh, you know going on that she gives chizuk on a daily basis. And now we're, uh, we're in this amazing group of women doing CBTT, which is uh, you know, therapy through Torah. 
And that's really re incredible. And that's what Kali Israel needs right now. They need the support. She also has SANE, which is uh, an organization um, saving an Ashama endowment, which is helping Kali Israel around the world, especially during this time of COVID, women volunteering their time to support other women. And I'm sure there's many other projects she's involved with. And I just want to welcome you aboard, Mar Miriam. So happy to be able Thank to be you. here with you in this uh, special space. Thank you. Thank you so much. And because we were back and forth, back and forth, trying to find the time. And usually when I do a class, I want like at least an hour and a half, you know, for question after, after. So I just, I'm going to really um, jump into the topic of quick tools, what we can use um, to really help us in that time of like almost uh like uh, almost like you know this toxic energy around us trying to break us down and uh remove us from that spiritual alignment and harmony with our soul that we so want oh my gosh in such a deep way so sometimes it depends on your mood which tactic you're gonna like pull out out of your bag as it and have it as like a, you know, a first aid kit constantly in the forefront of your mind. So when you find yourself in these kinds of situations, you can pull out one of them according to maybe your mood. And, um, and one of them is fight fire with fire. Since right now we just came through Hanukkah and the light of your soul, like mamish, right? Was shining through eight days of Mashiach light, Gan Eden. Uh, energy that's hopefully going to last us the whole year long and there's a pasuk in the in the tanya that says um gvura mamti gvura which means if something is so strongly having a hold over you and trying to bring you down then you need to use that fiery that gvura force to sweeten that element that's like trying to bring you down so for instance many examples that the Tanya teaches us about this is that like if god forbid someone got a snake bite they use the same venom uh, and, and poison to knock out the poison uh, of the snake god forbid if someone was was uh you know bit uh it's a bit like homeopathic remedies for your soul Another example is when you're when you see someone chopping down a tree. Well, the axe is made out of the tree and you're using the tree to chop down the tree. So you have to use the spiritual force that is in line with that element that's having a hold on you. That's so strongly trying to affect you in a not good way. So, for instance, um, you know, when you're thinking about gvura, strength. You can't just like wish it away and just like, oh, I, you know, and like you have to like get up and like wrestle it and with strength and say in your face, Yetzirah, I'm going to like, you know, turn up the volume on my gvura of my holy side of my soul. I'm going to use my fire, my determination, my netzach, my victory energy that God gave me. It's in me. It's not like I have to go somewhere to like try to find a, a victory energy. I just have to instantly recall that this is a gift Hashem gave me. And this is the gift that gives me the strength to fight, not fight with other people, but to fight the Yetzirah. That's the gift Hashem gave us. And it has a Kabbalistic remedy to it. Because if you use something of its same nature, it has the power to diffuse it like the snake venom that's used to get rid of the negative consequence of a snake bite. Just like what, uh, what we learn in, you know, uh, in any kind of uh, martial arts tactics, you know, there's the lazy one, right? Tiny talks about this. And, and, and he's, he might be really, really burly and strong and like, but if he's gonna be sluggish, then, then the skinny one can win over him because he's using the tactics of that, that, that uh, opposite of sluggish you know, energy to, the, to tackle it down. So, and this is the whole victory of Hanukkah. The few, they, who thought that they could like win, but they had the, 
the, the emuna and they had the bitachon and they put on their, you know, faith and they, they, they jumped into the sea of such trust and they were able to accomplish the unmanageable. So this is one super tactic. Write it down. Gura mamti gura. So if I have, let's say, a very high soul and I've been gifted with a lot of fire in my soul, which some people have more than average. So, and I tend to see that this fire is going askew and it's causing me the opposite of awe and fear and wonderment of Hashem, but it's causing me fear and anxiety, then I have to upgrade my fire and use that fire in a good way by developing more on wonderment because that's the opposite of the unholy energy of gura, the unholy energy of fire, of fear and anxiety that ends up being channeled into on wonderment. And the more you channel that and the more you connect to this is my source of, of conquering it. If I develop it in a good and holy way, and I'm going to use the fire to fight the fire, then the Yetzirah doesn't have a hold on you. Then from the source of the sweetness of up in Shemayim, it begins to like melt it away. It's like a power, a mystical power that, that, that's beyond your wildest imagination how when you use it in the positive that the negative starts to not get a hold on you. And that's the whole story of the, the Jewish people that were running into the Miklat and like, you know, when they were having the Avenger chase after them and they needed a safe haven, they ran into the Miklat. And the Miklat actually is prayer. Prayer is where you're going to use your fire in a good way so that the fire of the animal soul doesn't, um, you, you know, use your fire in a, in a negative and crippling way. So that's one tactic. Fire. <laughs> fight fire with fire another tactic in the tanya actually says sometimes maybe you're not so uh you know uh, capable you're just like it's really hard for you it's been more than average overwhelming and more than average like challenging and you just like y y you need like some kind of remedy to like again cancel out the stronghold on you. And this comes from the Zohar that the Altar Rebbe brings in Tanya that says that have rachamim on yourself. Rachamim has the power to redeem yourself. Rachamim, which means mercy. Mercy for your soul that, you know, left Shemaim, came down for the mission and like, look at where you're at right now. And somehow, Mercy has the power to unleash your soul powers. And the best place to use it is, again, in prayer. Because the more you arouse a mercy upon yourself, the more you, you know, connect to the, like, like the pity of your soul that is kind of struggling right now, the more you have, um, like, God's rachamim aroused. And when you arouse God's rachamim, because you did it, for yourself, then you have his power again, redeeming you and helping you come out of uh, out of your imprisonment. Now, there's a whole deep explanation of why this works. Are you ready for the just, like, just like we just learned, the, this mystical power to use the same source and has a mystical power to cancel it out as like a first aid when you're really in a in a in a real tough situation. So this one has a real deep explanation. And I'm going to uh, say briefly, but, you know, who do you need more than anybody to help you? Hashem! <laughs> so the highest form of transformative energies that you want from Hashem is His mercy. Like, if you had to choose, like... Uh, there's so many like levels of godliness that you're praying to like redeem you and help you. But out of all powers, mercy is the one to go to because mercy actually has God's highest uh, powers of transformation because the highest level of Hashem 
is God as he is merciful. That's why the, the whole like holidays of uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, it's all about the 13 attributes of mercy because we need him to, to help us, to, to, to get us out, to, to lift us up from our, from our, from our challenges and our, and our stuckness and our, God forbid, you know, frozenness of, of not being able to get out of a situation of, of negative emotion, especially. And, and especially with what's going on today, all around us. So why does mercy work so brilliantly? Is because that's Hashem's highest power. And when you access Hashem's highest power of mercy, then you are capable of like getting out of that exile. And specifically, when, when you're in this exile state, you need something of the highest order of Hashem to redeem you. And this is it. So another teaching is, this is number three. And Alter Rebbe brings it out. Let's say you find yourself in this like, you know, anxious or sad or just this blah mood. And you're just like, you know, you just the other day were like more inspired. And now you're like, what happened? Like, what's... <laughs> What, what's going on with me? You know, I feel blocked. I feel like someone just, you know, um, has hidden my, my light, my energy, my joy, my love. And, um, and so the altar actually says that there's a remedy called chuva, especially chuva ila'a to break the negative, eroding energy that's kind of trapping you. And the tshuva, ila'a, which is this generation's remedy. Uh, it takes a rebbe of our generation to say, we don't have to do the type of rolling in the snow and bitterness and heavy heartedness. And like today, this generation, we could do tshuva, ila'a, which means a highest and highest form of joyful tshuva. Yes, you can look at something maybe that happened. Maybe you fell prey to speaking not so politely or angelically. Maybe you gave in to a certain temptation that, that you know, you're human and it happened. So that can cause a blockage on your heart. And so the chuva, especially chuva ila'a, with joy and thankfulness that all you have to do is like admit and be cognizant that, yeah, you, you had a moment of, <laughs> of a yurida, of a little fall and just a few, not even like five sentences long, the Rebbe says, of just like acknowledging, you know, uh, what you did wrong and, and like switch to such a joyful energy that you know Hashem is a forgiver of all forgivers. He, he constantly forgives, not like humans where you can uh, only go so far with forgiveness after someone sinned against you so many times. Of course, we're supposed to emulate Hashem's ways, but this is a remedy. You've been a bit blocked from your negative behavior, thought, speech, or action, and just being cognizant and being aware that you have a chance to redeem yourself by doing this quick remedy gives you an access to God's power to like melt away this barrier. And the Alter Rebbe says in Tanya, clearly, not only will it take away the and dispel the darkness that you're feeling, whether it's sadness or anxiousness or whatever, but it will bring to birthing a joy that like, that's like so delightful. Like not only will you get out of the brooding, negative, heavy heartedness, but it'll take you to a place of joy. So of course you don't want to do tshuva all day long in a sense, you know, because you want to be filling your days with, you know, uh, with positivity and happiness. Um, and it's not healthy. You know, if someone has a virus and if you believe in all these kinds of medicines, you don't take the penicillin all day long. It's not good for you. So like a little dose, especially when you're in this trapped state so that you can have a victory out of this trapped state, a little tshuva with joy. And what does tshuva ilah really mean? It means a joy to be able to shuvahe, to return, 
to shuv, to return to Hashem. Hey, and to allow the opportunity to be even closer to Hashem because of this fall. So that your Yerida can be Litzor Chaliyah, which means that your Yerida, your having fell in this way, gives you the power to Aliyah, to like use it as a stepping stone to get even higher up and even closer to Hashem. So, so it's actually going to give you such a pleasure while doing this uh, that you will be brought to a state of joy because one, you know Hashem forgives you, period. We say three times a day Hashem forgives us. We don't say Hashem's name in vain. So we know he forgives us and that, the Rebbe says, can bring us to a joy that will break this like barrier. That's number four. You're in the midst of something. You don't know how to get out of it. You keep falling like into this state of uh, confusion of, 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 of of trying to get out of it, quick remedy number four, do a mini tshuva with joy. Do a little extra learning after. Do a little extra maybe to heal him, you know, with happiness to, to show Hashem, wow, I can't wait to get closer and closer to you. This is tshuva ila'a, and it is called for as a remedy in this generation. So we see another remedy is is fighting against your own nature. Because let's say a person is very, very inclined toward chesed. They're very, very inclined toward just being so kind and so giving and so nice. And it came to a point where they had to use a bit of strength to be maybe, you know, um, you know, kind of something against their nature. And that's the whole like, message of Hanukkah like because you can have one light that's very strong but you might have a different light that's not so strong you might be very chesedic you know in the in the Beit HaMikdash the seven menorahs represented the seven Jews the seven spheres of each Jew so maybe you have a nature of Hillel so kind and so lenient and and then maybe you're not so gvordic right you don't have like a Shammai type of personality you're you, you know so sometimes you have to like go to the opposite side to get to the middle road so that so that you're you, you have to almost upgrade almost the opposite side of your soul and so many stories like you know Abraham it was so against his nature to go and sacrifice his, his son it was you know everything opposite of him and when you see even the story of Yitzchak and and it says that Yitzchak prayed opposite of Rivka because, and that's how he got pregnant with, and was able to have a baby. I mean, she, she was, and he was able to impregnate her was because he was a very feminine energy. And he had to step up to the plate of going against his nature and, and being opposite of his feminine nature and had to use his like gvurdic energy to be able to then have a baby. It's actually kind of a remedy for people who have child issues. So if there's like two feminine energies or two king energies in the house, one of them has to do the opposite of their nature uh, uh, or both to uh, be able to have the remedy of being able to create a new creation. So sometimes you have to work almost opposite your nature also to then get yourself out of a funk. So if you're normally, you know, um, you know, not able to, you know, be strong and, and, you, and you normally would rather the compassionate and rather like, you know, the other ways, sometimes going against your nature in this way to like step up to the balance of the wholesome you that you need to be so that you have like a harmony of all these spiritual energies can really get you out of a, a you know, a predicament like Yitzchak who prayed opposite his wife Rivka because he needed to step up and work on, you know, completing his soul by uh, developing the, the weakness that he had to be able to create. I mean, many stories of the Lubavitcher Rebbe that we know, he was so 
um, Gvordic by nature, and he had to really work on himself to be more chesedic, to be a Rebbe. And even the Friedrich Rebbe actually was very chesedic, but he had to like take upon himself a little more gvura to be the Rebbe. So even great tzaddikim, great masters of our generations um, needed these tactics and, 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 and these tools uh, to be able to be victorious and be the leader. And we all are extensions of Hashem. And we all are the extensions of Mashiach that is within us that are, that are here to be able to help others banish their darkness. So we need sometimes our own remedies so that we can go out there and do what we're supposed to be doing, whether it's in your own family or your own siblings or, or you know, or beyond the, 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 uh, the public uh, route that we all are now commissioned to be in this generation more and more lamp lighters, especially us women. The Lubavitcher Rebbe says that we women have the kind of nature, the kind of warmth in our soul to be able to really help others shine their light because of our, our, our special wisdom that is uh, very connected to the warmth of our neshama that allows others to be more attracted to the Torah because of our gentle and loving ways. So, and, and, and if you look at this week's Parsha, if you look at this week's Parsha, um, you see that Yehuda steps up to the plate and it says the Yehuda, right? He, he goes and by gosh, and, and he approaches Yosef. And, 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 and he was doing it in, in such a gavordic way that he was risking his life because you know, he didn't even, like, you know, Queen Esther risked her life to go see the king. This was like, like the same order of self-sacrifice. And he did it because he needed to do the tshuva. He needed to, like, make sure that the, the time before when he had a chance to save uh, Yosef from being sold, you know, he was a bit, I remember learning, he was a bit wimpy. Because he didn't want to look like the holier-than-thou brother. He said, you know what? I'll, con I'll make up a, a story. I'll say, you know, why should we have blood on our hands? And I'll let them put him in a pit. And then when they move away, I'll go and, and save him. He, he was a bit, you know, sorry, you wanted to say the word wimpy, but this is what our, te our Torah teaches us. That uh, And then after the fact, he went back and he saw that he was gone and he did shuba all his life. He couldn't believe like he had missed the opportunity. So here he was like, that's it. I'm using fire with fire. I'm going to do the opposite of my nature. I'm going to go there and step to the plate and I'm going to go and face this second in command Pharaoh, even at the risk of my life to make sure at least Binyamin will be saved because I did not save Yosef. So we are taught because he did such a forceful move and he was so like with this victory, like Gvurdik, Netzach, victory energy, that it dissipated so many decrees against the brothers. It not only gave merit to their own family for generations to come, one act of him going almost against his nature of not wanting to be like a forceful zealot back in the days with his Yosef and his other brothers that he did the tikkun. So now the next one is humbleness. And the humbleness is a huge key too. And all these are like quick remedies. You know, like a seed that's in the ground and it's, uh, it's like protected from the elements so that it could finally get them all the nutrients it needs and to grow. So like when we, when we are in a state of, um, you know, pity or why me? And I can't believe this happened. Da, 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 da. You have to just like remind yourself, okay, the situation is seemingly burying me, but my eyes cannot see the ways of Hashem. Just like the seed looks like it's being buried and oh, why are you burying the seed? But it's the bearing of the seed that makes it grow. 
So when you realign yourself with this understanding of uh, my limited intellect cannot fathom the ways of Hashem. And if this happened, it's meant to happen. And it seems like I'm being buried, but this experience, please God, let me be humbled by it. That I'm gonna, with Imuna and Bitachon, like realize I need these like holy ammunitions to help me ground myself and like get out of this funk because who am I to know what I need to go through in my life? Who am I to like outwit God's plan for me, you know? And, and, and like, like just have a moment of humbleness and try best to like, like get out of the egocentric uh, mind state that makes you feel anxious or sad or mad because it's the ego that's driving a person to that kind of frenzy. But humbleness, no, I'm not God. I can't even micromanage my room, let alone <laughs> my whole house, uh, barely. So like God is micromanaging the whole world and, uh, and, and I, just, I, I just have to like rely on my trust and my faith and he knows what he's doing and I'm not going to judge God unfavorably, even though it feels icky. So that's a remedy. And I remember reading the Haftorah of Rosh Chodesh saying like humbleness access all the deepest inner like essence of your soul. Like, like if you have like, one main goal in life is to reach a level of humbleness because that is the key remedy to unlock the reservoir of all the holy potential that you have, all the reservoir of godly energies so that you can have a victory. And with that humbleness, you can latch on to Ahava and Yirat Hashem. You can latch on to Emune and Bitachon because uh, you know, on one foot, how do you access the humbleness to access all these other amazing soul powers is through tefillah and through learning Torah. And you know, I've been preaching a lot about that the past 33 years of my life. And every day I'm posting one thing or another about praying and meditation. And that's really where you have to begin. But sometimes you need quick remedies at your side to like get some extra spiritual energy to break the fog and to help you psychologically and spiritually realign yourself and these are the first that i would like to share with you so i want to um bless you that um that we women like it says in this week's parsha like it says that when the last of the 70 souls that entered into Galos was Yocheved. And Yocheved made the whole 70 complete. And the Lubavitcher Rebbe says that it's a woman that helps all the others become complete. She has the power to bring out the light in everyone. That's why she lights Shabbos candles, the Rebbe says. So like we need to make sure nobody snuffs our light. As my Hanukkah class, that was really amazing class the last week that we did together, um, I posted it. So if anyone's interested, PM me, I'll repost it to you. And we got to make sure that we have the holy weapons that when it starts to snuff out a bit, like to rekindle it and strike a match and make it stronger and forge ahead and march forward because the goal is depending on us. The anchoring and the light of our home and, and, the, and the light of the whole world is dependent on us. Bezrat Hashem, we have to do, uh, uh, as my son is here crossing, uh, recently my new uh, logo like uh, statement is, uh, there must be a method to this madness. And it is. Tanya and Hasidus is the method to this madness of this world and what's going on. And these are the tactics and we got to pay attention to it. And we got to like practice, write the notes of this class, write those five things down, review it every night before you go to sleep so that it becomes ingrained in your brain. These are the things I can do to get me out of the funk. These are like, you know, and then visualize yourself like practicing these tactics. And you will see more and more of that success. In one of the Hayom Yom, it said that, you know, humility, 
this this core element that hopefully through davening and praying and meditation and learning once you develop this taps into the infinite you imagine that's our goal these are our tactics these are our tools these are our techniques we got to get in the habit of them just like every day you brush your teeth and you know like oh my gosh you don't want to get bacteria on your teeth like these are the tools to not allow your soul to be covered in the plaque of the things of, that you engage in that are burying you, God forbid. So, um, you know, so every night's Shmalamita is a holy weapon to, uh, to, to really strip away the barriers of your heart and the blockages of your heart. So, you know, if you can't wait till Shema Lamita, then do it in the middle of the day, like we said. Do a Tshuva Ila'an when you're in this state. But a good remedy to, like, fight against, like, you know, you take vitamin C to, to prevent from having any kind of virus. So you take this remedy of Shema Lamita every night and do the Tshuva Ila'an every night, then it helps you from collecting the blockage so that it'll be a preventative care that you won't get into this blah and, and you know, heavy hearted phase of, of uh, any kind of negative emotion. And the reason why is when you go to bed, it's like you're putting a two double edged sword to like chop down the klipas of your day, like plaque, you're getting rid of plaque, you're getting rid of the klipas of maybe you said something so not nicely, or maybe you sinned, or maybe you didn't do something so much, L'shem Shaman, whatever it is, and you're clearing your heart. And that's why it says in the Torah that, you know, you should circumcise your heart. That's our goal, to unblock our heart, to redeem the godly essence that's, that's buried down inside of you. And the nighttime Shema, actually, is actually the first step of preventative care to make sure you don't go into this deep state. So, so far we talked about the remedies while you're in that state. Shema Lamita uh, is also a preventative care, a tool of tactics, uh, you wanna call it, you know, sorry Hashem, I'm using these terminology, <laughs> but for us people uh, in this world that can relate to these kinds of terms, to help us be able to like prevent our heart from being blocked. And once your heart is like peeled away from these layers of the days, you know, deeds that weren't so, you know, maybe holy, then your soul is free to go up to Shemaim. And we're, when your soul is free to go up to Shemaim, guess what happens? You get recharged. All your Torah and mitzvahs now get planted in your mind and in your heart. So you, be ha you, you have a healthier mind. You have a healthier heart. And so next day is davening. After you planted all the seeds of your Torah and mitzvahs in your heart and your, and, and your, uh, and your mind during the, the, the nighttime, uh, when the soul goes back to heaven, then it wakes up in the morning recharged. And then the next day is davening and learning actually waters those seeds that you planted at night. So um, I hope you hear uh, this well. I hope always from my heart to your heart, these are the things that I've been using uh, as my um, remedies and, and tools for victory. Uh, and this is what I've been using in my CBTT uh, practice in helping others uh, in their um, as a guidance spiritual counselor you want to call it and I've been giving the training for free uh, I have a whatsapp group I post the classes I post when the next CBTT training we're actually having a class tomorrow two special ladies Hana and Devora are going to share their stories how the CBTT training has really been not only helpful for them but they've been also giving it to others and seeing really amazing, um, you know, results from these uh, CBTT uh, training classes. And you're welcome to join because uh, we need more healing practitioners that are aligned with the Torah, full Torah perspective of healing. And I am so happy that you are all here joining me.
I'd like to say hi to everyone as I uh, give uh, our dear Karen the platform. Can I just ask you, Miriam, can you hear me? Yes, I just I want can. to find out. Yeah, I just want to find out about the group, how to join yes. the group. So you can do, um, wow, there's Baruch Hashem, a nice group of women here. We, you can uh, PM me at 646-243-0842 and I'll add you to the group and then I'll send you up to now what we've covered so far. And tomorrow I will post in the group uh, all the information for the Zoom meeting tomorrow on our next CBTT training can you can you repeat your number again, please? Yes. 646-243-0842. Mm -hmm. Or 0842. So I just yeah, sent it in the chat. Number. Can you confirm that that's correct? Yeah, that's the number. Nice to see, Shoshana, that you're interested. And, and we also have a new... Um, I was recently asked to be interviewed in a magazine called Posh Magazine, and I think Hannah is still here. And she was like interviewing me. I was talking about CBTT and that's how our connection all started. Um, and she was so excited about this, like, you know, remedy for today's ailments of mind, body and soul that she said, we got to make a magazine about this. And I'm like, really? Yes. And so we're in partnership. So we're also looking for writers, um, uh, that are already kind of more inclined to, to, to write about how spirituality is really the way to go in Hebrew. Uh, I mean, in, in, in the, not, <laughs> in the, what's it called? Healing, you know? So if you're that type of person that wants to get involved, we're looking for volunteer writers to be part of this first beginning baby. Yes. CBTT, Cognitive Behavioral Torah Therapy. Uh, and for those who do not have, let's say, a master's degree and don't even have a coaching degree, you don't need anything but Hashem's approval to be a spiritually uh, aligning people back to their source of their soul. Uh, you just need to have a caring heart. You have to have a moon and bitachon that Hashem gave us the tools in the Torah um, to, you know, to reach our redemption. You know, like if you look at the Lechlecha, the, the story of Abraham, and he, he was commanded to leave, the, you know, his birthplace, his home place and his land and like and go to a new place and Lechlecha, go to the real you. And I remember learning this deep teaching that like why focus on everything he's leaving behind? Why not like go into where he's going to go to? Because these three things can really be obstacles to hold you down and not let you be the real you. And this is like a, an empowering commandment by Hashem for everyone. So your home is your nurture that you may not have gotten. You may have had a traumatic childhood. But look what trauma Abram got. But he became Abram, the leader and father of our people. You know, he had a murderous father. Um, the, the, the birthplace is your genetic predisposition towards certain character traits. You might be more Hillel-like. You might be more Shechemite-like. You might have a fiery temperament like a baker's oven. You might be born with such an earthy element. Um, so, so, like, you can leave that behind, meaning you can take that angry, anxious, or depressed, or addictive, or fighting type of personality whether you saw it growing up or it's in the nature of your blood of your soul and channel it and leave the negative behind and go to the positive it and eris is the land and and land represents like like from the word la roots you ran toward escapism and you you've been hiding and you've been burying yourself and you're you can leave that escapism and the bad habits of escapism behind and run toward the true you and this is what CBTT is all about, to unravel uh, uh, a lot of the psychobabble that's out there that makes us feel like we're, we're broken or damaged goods or that we have chemically imbalances and blah, blah, blah. That, that's, that's, we have hell, get all kind, mamish. It's all there. We're that jug of oil that cannot be tainted with and cannot be disturbed and cannot be snuffed out. 
we just have to have that victory mentality. We have to use the secrets like from the Torah as tactics and like weapons and holy weapons against the Yetzirah and we'll get to the, to the victory. I promise you. And yes, we wax and wane like the moon and sometimes we have, you know, the ups and the downs, but we're constantly growing, constantly when we do this avoida every day, it might not cure you because no such thing as a cure of hunger. So, but it will satiate you with the soul powers to have a victory day. So I don't want to take more time. Karen is there. I'm so happy. Excuse me, one more question. Yes. One more question. Do you have a recording of the beginning of this? Because it took me a while to get back on. Yes, yes it is being recorded. recorded. Okay, great. Yay, thank you. So Who I, is it that um, Nice to meet you. Miriam, thank I just you. want to say thank you so much. Really, thank you. My pleasure. If you can say thank your thank name, you, so I need to know you. My name's Dorit. Dorit. Okay, so for all of you who joined, I have YouTube channels. I have um, books so that all this information is really there in my books, Baruch Hashem, you know, kind of dispersed. I just maybe have to write another book called uh, <laughs> Secrets to Victory. That's, I like that title, actually. It just came to me. I was so happy because it was just like, ah, Hanukkah and, and the Hey Tavis, you know, the whole victory of, oh my gosh, those books. So we have to celebrate. It's a minhag to buy books. Fill up your, your, your cart on Hey Tavis or the day after or the day before, like and celebrate that we have books to learn from because the dynasty of the Rebbe's books were, were at risk of being uh, snatched. And I remember learning myself. And last night, my husband again reminded me of this teaching yeah, that, yeah. that the reason these Hey Tavis books happen is that so that we can be inspired to now really use more books for our own victory mm -hmm. yes karen you're a, powerhouse. you're a powerhouse thank you so so much for sharing your inspiration your love your light your beautiful neshama inside and out and i'm so so thrilled that we have the opportunity of doing this and being a project so many women you gave us such amazing amazing tools today so um, I thank you so, so much for joining thank us. Thank you. And had a really tight schedule, so it was really hard to schedule. Yeah, so I'm going to go, but I want to stay, and I'll, I'll listen to the rest, Karen. We it's actually have a very special, um, we have a special uh, intermission. We have a special guest today. Um, when I started Lev Ha'am, recall, you could all keep yourselves muted, please. When I started Lev Ha'am, I... Um, I got to know this very special singer from his uh, beautiful song, Father, and we played it. And um, it was so moving and so touching and everybody got such chizuk from it, such strength from it. And his name is Tani Polanski. He actually just came out with an amazing new video and song. It's called Dear God. I don't know if he's gonna be singing it today, but he, is, he agreed. Mama, she has a few minutes and he agreed to join us. Wow. Thanks for us to give us a little bit of Kizuk and inspiration. So, Miriam, if you could stay on a little bit longer. Yes, I'm going to try to sing, stay on just a little longer. Okay, amazing. Tani, you want to come out and say hello? Hello. Hey. Shalom, everyone. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you too. Hey, Karen. Give Long us time. a little intro. Tell us what you're up to. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this spontaneous. You're amazing. This is how we this is how we roll, Karen. You know how it goes. That's it. That's it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just uh, to be here. Um, just, um, right now, I'm, my name is Tani. I'm living in New York. Um, I'm in Smicha and YU, um, working on recording uh, my first album called Tefila, um, which is uh, in the works. I almost done, God willing. Just uh, in the middle of a fundraiser, trying to raise some money to get it over the edge. Um, and um, working for NCSY. Somebody wants to help us sponsor it and to donate something today. Anybody wants to do that? 
sponsorship. Really inspire a lot of people. <laughs> um, Bezrat Hashem would be tremendously appreciated. But um, yeah, I'm working on music. I'm working for NCSY, doing a little Kirov. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's sort of what's happening right now. Um, so I figured I would share with you a song that I was just, um, you got me as I was about to step out of my uh, step out of my room. I'm working on a song right now in the studio called Odecha. That I think is just a really special song. I can sing Dear God instead, but um but Odecha? Is that what it's called? What? From Halo? Odecha from Halo? Odecha from Halo, but it's a little, little bit wow, of a twist. Wow, that's one of my <laughs> favorite uh cooking from Halo. Wow. My we have a lot of women from my gratitude chat. I think you have Shem chat on here. So that's perfect. That's amazing. So this song I wrote with a friend of mine on a Shabbaton in Canada. We were sitting together in a room on Lel Shabbat and just like, just, we just ended up writing this song together and singing and crying through this song for like an hour and a half. Um, and we changed the words a little bit. And it's, um, it's Pitchuli Shari Tzedek Abova Modeka. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I'll come in them and I'll thank you. Zashar Lashem is the gate of Hashem. Tzadikim Yavovo. That's the righteous people will come into it. Odecha Kianitani. I will thank you. Because you, um, you answered me about the healing of Yeshua, and you were for me, um, uh, you you were you gave me salvation, um, and then so we added a second part that is the Gambazman, and even when Kshenira, when it seems Shalosha Matzavikuli, that you didn't hear my voice and you didn't answer me, Afalpichen Gamodecha. Even so, I'll still thank you. So I'll show you the song. <laughs> Da 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 Tzadikim yavovo, tzadikim, tzadikim yavovo. Abba tiftach li sharecha, shel tzadik avova modeka, odeka. Zashah, lashah, tzadikim yavovo, ani lo tzadik. Vani Yotzer Avon Echa Kiyani Tani Ivati Ili Lishua Vika Bisma Shani Resh Shalo Shamat Zamikuli Ava Upichen Odeka Ken Odeka Thank you so much. Yes, Tanya, uh, that was great. Wow, that was really, really inspiring. Tani, every time you sing, it touches the heart. Wow, yes. 
it touches the heart. It's incredible. It's you know, your 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 songs are from neshama. They just they're neshama songs. I mamish connect to everything. You know, when every time you sing, and the words, this tremendous koach in your in your song. And and shira is a form of tefillah. All right, it's the highest form of tefillah, David and Melech. That's all, well, you know, Tehillim. You were just singing Tehillim. So that was so powerful. Thank you so, so much. I'm going, to, is it okay if I share your phone number? Sure, come on. Okay, people are asking me how they can help uh, maybe sponsor and they want to hear a little bit about the work you do with NCSY. And um, maybe they can help with that as well. Yeah, anything. You have, time for, you have time for Dear God or no? You have to run. I can do a quick snippet. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. This is the new single, right? This is a, it's a cover. It's not my song originally. I covered it and I changed it a little bit and added to it. Um, dear God. I heard this song the first time and I was just so moved. So, dear God. I've been trying awful hard to make you proud of me And it seems The harder that I try All the harder it becomes And I feel like giving up Most of the time Dear God, I've been chasing their approval and it's killing me. And I know the more I try to prove, all the less I have to show. And I'm stuck inside my head most of the time. If I pray a little harder, if I follow all the rules, I wonder could I ever be enough? Cause I try and try just to fall back down again. I ask myself why do I try to chase the wind? I should lead into the mystery. Maybe hope is found in a melody. So I'm gonna try again Oh, I'm gonna try again And dear child I hope you know how much I love you And I'm proud of you Please believe Thoughts I have for you will never change or fade away. When you felt like giving up, I never did. Cause I'm not scared of imperfections, all the questions in your head. Just know that you have always been enough. And I saw you wrestle with Free how and free why I was right there listening Just fall into the mystery And I'll meet you here in the melody So try it is to try again My child, will you try again? My child, will you love again? My child, you can love again.
that song <laughs> wow that was so beautiful thank you so beautiful. much beautiful thank you all so much for listening i have to step out i really Mami. thank you for having me on always you're such a static i give you a bracha the bezrat hashem you should be so find your zivuga goon and to be matzliach in all that you're doing. This year, Bezrat Hashem, should be a zivug agun, shat v'amut v'achat, build your bayit ne'eman, and be zochet ha'parnasa v'shefa, and Bezrat Hashem, we continue to inspire Klal Yisrael, Bezrat Hashem. Oh, Amen. Thank you so much. Amazing, amazing. I'm really so grateful. Tada rabba, Tani. Skele mitzvot. Anybody yeah. wants to reach Tani, we'll put his number on the chat. Please feel free to reach out, help sponsor his new cover, and help Thank him in his so Abodat Kodesh. Take care, Tani. So, ladies, that was really like so last minute. Chaz yeah. de Hashem, that we were so good to have Tani on. And um, I want to leave the. How do I leave the meeting? Mm -hmm. Sorry. If you could keep yourself muted, appreciate it. Um, I just uh, asked him to come on because his mom um, asked me to share um, his song. And, um, you know, I, I, I figured, you know, maybe we'll get a little inspiration in the middle of our shoe. And I, mom has just texted him in the middle of uh, Miriam speaking and he agreed. He came, he like came on, he didn't even like tell me anything. So Chaz De Hashem, um, we're so happy to have him. And um, as Rat Hashem, you know, we should, uh, we should this inspiration should, should carry through with us, as Rat Hashem. It's interesting that he's saying um, these two songs in relation to tefillah and to gratitude. As um, Hashem, I'm uh, looking forward to be starting a new series. You get to hear about it first um, on tefillah. This is my dream to be able to give a class on um, on davening, and we're going to be starting a series Bezrat Hashem on Sharim uh, Tefillah, the gates of prayer from the book of Rav Shimshim Pinkus. He has a lot of svarim out there, and this is one of them. It talks about the different languages of tefillah, and um, I'm really excited about it because I always wanted to learn it more in depth. And this will be my opportunity in preparation for this year to share with you. And what better time now to up our tefillah to really get inspiration and and uh, and learn more about the meaning of the words that we are saying every single day. You know, we utter tefillah that we don't even understand the koach, the koach that we have when we daven. So um, I'm really excited um, to share. Um, to share with you this new uh, project of mine, Bezrat Hashem, and that I'm going to be teaching. And um, just in joining today with Miriam, and it's all about victory. And really, if we look at the story of Hanukkah, I started off before saying, for those of you who didn't come on earlier, that we just finished off with Hanukkah. With Zot Hanukkah, we had the climax of the last day, which is the Hanukkah Tamizbeach the opportunity for us to be able to tap into the koach of tefillah even more. That's the day, the dedication of the Mishkan and um, of the Mizbeach, excuse me. And um, it's a time for when our tefillah, it says this is the last, you know, the last bit of when we take our, the uh, Malachim take our tefillah, you know, on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we have the Ktiva and the Khatima. And now is a time that it's actually sent out. And, you know, the, this is a big Yom Tov, especially by Hasidim. And um, from my understanding, it was just Hey Tevet. I don't know if Mir mentioned it, but um, it's also like a mini Yom Tov for Chabad. When it's called Dida Netzach, the day of Nitzachon, that they got back the writings of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Very special time. So we're coming off of, of really very, very powerful days. But yet we are in the midst of such darkness. You know, um, it's very hard for me when the days are very short and it gets dark. 
you know, quite early. And, um, you know, there's not a lot of a day, you know, and all of a sudden it's like dark already and it's already nighttime and like, you don't know what to do with yourself. I don't know about you, before we had the Hanukkah lights, it was exciting. And now it's like, uh, it's night already. What do you mean? It's the end of the day. What am I doing? What did I do today? What did I accomplish? And how many times do we feel this lull after Hanukkah? Baruch Hashem, we had Shabbat. So we didn't feel it as much. We went straight into Shabbat right after the end of Hanukkah. And then Motzei Shabbat, Baruch Hashem, was zochet to be at a simcha on Thursday night. And Zot Hanukkah was uh, my, my Rav, Rav Avraham Levi, his daughter got married. Baruch Hashem, Mazal Tov. And then I went into Shabbat, Sheva Brachot. And Motzei Shabbat was also Sheva Brachot. And we had a shiur. And it was just like a continuation of a simcha. So not feeling yet the lull, but... It's always so hard to put away the menorah. My menorah is still sitting there. I don't know about yours. It's very hard for me to put it away. It's very hard to say goodbye, you know, and we're going into the midst of winter. Now it started getting a little chilly here in Israel. And uh, how do we carry, how do we carry through with uh, the victory that we felt, you know, the Maccabim, they went and they, you know, rededicated, re, you know, renewed the, the Mizbeach, renewed the Bet HaMikdash, they were able to fight the warriors. They were able to get up there and say, Mila Hashem Eli. How are we able to carry that torch? How are we able to carry that light? And I'm going to share with you a little bit of what I heard last week, which was an incredible shiul that a dear friend of mine, Avigali Shakis, and uh, another dear friend, Sarah Liba, they now give a series together on Shabbat, also from Rav Shem Pinkis. They include others for him, um, the... Zera uh, Shemshon, they also include, and other Sfarim that they, you know, they bring in all about the beauty of Shabbos. And last week was about Hanukkah. And the title of their shir was Be Light. Avigal Ishakis, um, uh, if somebody knows her, if you can text her and let her know we're having a shir, I didn't get a chance even to tell her. But um, Avigal Ishakis gave over an amazing story. She had a special needs son. And, and she was feeling it, you know, and Hanukkah is a time that as much as it's a time of Simcha and you're gathering together, all the families and parties, you know, I don't know if you realize that there are people out there that are lighting the Hanukkah on their own. This year for me was a little challenging. I didn't have my kids with me. I wasn't close to my siblings or my parents or my nieces, my nephews. You know, so many people are lighting their Hanukkah on their own and every Chag is another challenge, you know, another time of like, feeling that aloneness as much as it's a happy time it's a time of life it's a time of bringing more light into the world it's also challenging for people who are on their own whether you're an older single whether you're an almana widower um whether you're you know you know you just you don't have your family near you your kids near you especially now with corona it's so challenging you know so how do we keep on giving light so avigal was saying that it was it was a challenging day for her happens to be and and she went over to her special needs son as he was in bed and, and he felt her vibes and he looked at her and uh, he said to her, be light. And he doesn't talk very much, but he said the words, be light. And she said, whoa, like she was moved, be light. What is that? You know, that's like, that's the only thing he said. And like, can you imagine the power of those words is that we have the power the power to shine our light, the power to give over light, to give over chizuk to other people, to shine our light of inspiration, whether you're, you know, young, you're old, you're middle-aged, you know, whatever predicament you're in, you are able to shine light and give light over to Kla Yisrael. Every time you learn something, you share with a friend, you spread the inspiration. I have friends constantly giving me chizuk on WhatsApp sending me beautiful posts I share with you in, in our groups, Baruch Hashem. Here's an opportunity, you hear something, you saw something, you read something, spread it, give it over to somebody else, be light. We are light. I was listening to Saratova Best. She has a, a YouTube, she was talking about Hanukkah and the last day of Hanukkah, she showed the menorah how it was all lit. And she said, we are the menorah. We are light. We have an opportunity of shining our light. We're in all Lagoim. The Jewish people are a light unto the nations. And we 
as we do a mitzvah, every time we say a tefillah, we utter a tefillah, you saw Tani, he was just singing, he shared his light. We have an opportunity, we don't need to be on a Zoom call, we don't need to be you know, spreading it to thousands of women, just by who we are and what we have, we're able to be light in our homes, especially now during the time when there's this pandemic, it's so hard to go out and to do and to be with people, but in your own home, you're able to spread this light, to be light in the way you react to things or don't react to things, in the way you take your sidul and you start to daven, even if you don't feel like davening, you do an act of kindness, you put you know, money that's the kabat. I have a gratitude um, WhatsApp group. Um, if you're not part of it, please text me and I'll help you join it. And there are women that are in constant gratitude every day, thanking Hashem. Yesterday, Rav Arush or Daniel Katz spoke. I didn't get to hear the whole thing, but it was an incredible shiu and gave so much chizuk and inspiration. And Rav Arush always talks about the power of gratitude that we have. When you're in gratitude, you're giving over light. You're sharing your light. You're having tremendous emuna. This is the power of the woman. Emuna, the shorosh of emuna is the em, the mothers. We have the koach, whether you're a mother or you're going to be a mother very soon. You have that potential inside of you to give over the all the light. And by just being in gratitude. So in this group, there are women who are writing about their challenging situations of in not such pleasant situations, you know, of, of not being so besimcha in a certain situation, somebody embarrassed somebody or, you know, somebody didn't, you know, they didn't have the opportunity of getting that thing that they wanted and they didn't have their grandkids near them on Hanukkah or, you know, whatever challenging situation. I had a woman one time, you know, being gratitude and that she had a miscarriage. Actually, I'm sorry, it's stillborn. And it was her 10th child. And she wrote this in the group. I want to thank Hashem because as a result of that time in my life, I was able to grow in my emuna like never before. And since then, I had the opportunity of having more children. And now I can look back and be in gratitude. This is the incredible women that I know incredible, incredible women that I'm, you know, so, so grateful to Hashem to be a part of that are spreading light just in the fact that they have gratitude with the nisyonot and the challenges that they face. I have another friend, she told me, I'm, I'm trying to have gratitude. I'm going through hard stuff. This is not easy for me, but I know that Hashem loves me. And I'm going to say thank you to Hashem today. That's tremendous, tremendous victory. We're talking about being victorious, overcoming the Yetzirah. We just want to complain. We just want to be in misery. We, I didn't get what I wanted. I, I'm, I'm not feeling good today. I didn't get to do what I wanted to do. I didn't accomplish. I feel lousy. And we go into this criticism, self-criticism. And what does Hashem want from us? To be light to understand that we have an opportunity to, instead of being negative, instead of being in criticism of ourselves, it's not any better that you're in criticism of yourself. You're not allowed to be in criticism of others. You're also not allowed to criticize yourself. Hashem sees us and we, what do we say? Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem, for this opportunity to serve you. B'simcha, ibdu et Hashem b'simcha. How, how difficult that is for so many people on a day-to-day -day basis who are going through suffering and challenges. Each one, you know, whatever situation they're in is such a big challenge and nobody would exchange their peckle with somebody else, even though it looks like it might be a little lighter and it might be a little easier. This is what Hashem is telling us. Hashem is telling us that we have the opportunity of being the light. We don't have the light of menorah anymore. But we carry that light within us. Every single Jew is a chelak elokam mimal. We are all part of Hashem's neshama. Ki ner Hashem nishmat adam, the neshama of a person. The ner is synonymous with the neshama of a person. When you look at that candle, you look at the flames, if you're looking at them, hopefully you did, you daven by the nerot. It's a very big sigula to look at the nerot and to daven. 
But every time you look at a candle, what, is, what does the candle always do? The, the flame is always pointing up. No matter where you're gonna turn the candle, the flame is always going to be pointing upwards. That's the power of a Jew, the Pintele Yid, that no matter what, no matter what programs we went through, the Holocaust, you know, all the challenging situations, all the different Galuyot, if you look at the Torah, look at what, what happened in the, in the whole story of Abraham and his children and Yitzchak and his children and Yaakov and his children. Right now we're in the midst of the story of Yosef and the brothers selling him. Every single one of the Avot and the Imahot went through challenging situations and we're not told these things for naught. We're told these things because their neshama continued to light up the world and in their merit, we're here today. I just heard Rabbi uh, Y.Y. Jacobson speak today and he talked about Yosef. B'nai Yisrael are called by Yosef's name. I forgot the pasuk that he mentioned today. But he says that we're like Yosef. That Yosef was continuously, continuously being me'ir, lighting up the world, giving Kla Yisrael this muna and chizuk. He continued to give over this muna. That's why he merited to have Ephraim and Manasseh. We, we bless our children every single Erev Shabbat. Why do we bless our children like Ephraim and Menashe? Why don't we bless them like, like Yitzchak, like Yaakov? Why are we blessing them after Yosef's children? After all, Yosef's children lived in Galut. Let's bless them after Yitzchak, who stayed in Eretz Yisrael. Let's bless them after the Avot, who were, you know, we, we pray in their merit. The Chachamim tell us that Ephraim and Menashe were the children of Yosef. And these children, even though they were in Galut, Bishut, their father, who when he looked at the Aviv, when he was about to sin with Eshet Potiphar, he saw the image of his father in front of him and he stopped and he stepped away and he ran away from the sin. And as a result, he merited to stay in Mitzrayim and still stay a Jew and still be able to be the one that everyone had to rely on and he brought the geulah, he mamash brought the geulah with this tremendous, tremendous koach of emunah and of patience, tremendous patience. What he went through, nisayon after nisayon, and then he merited to have these two children who remained Jews in the midst of the tum'ah, of the 49th level of tum'ah, of impurity in Mitzrayim. They remained Jews, they remained the symbol of the Jewish people and they continued to be tzaddikim. And they were the children of who? They were the children of, of Yosef. This is what Yosef, you know, gave over to them. And so we bless our children every Arab Shabbat. That Ephraim and Menashe have this koach of being able to continue even in Galut, even in the midst of the darkness to shine their light. And this is what Hashem wants from us. We're holding by times of, of complete darkness. Right now, things don't look so pleasant. Today, I just saw on the news, Halavai, it should be mevutal, batelu mevutal. But basically, I saw that I was saying that um, um, they're closing the, the all the, you know, the sharim, all the gates of the flights coming into Israel. And they're not going to be allowing anybody to come into Israel. And those people who are residents of Israel, they're allowing them to come, but they have to quarantine in a hotel. Um, and, um, you know, it's, they're worried about another virus or a mutation of the virus that's happening. We have no idea what's happening in the world. And we're not supposed to know. And we're not supposed to believe that this is uh, bad. We don't understand why everything's happening. Hashem is trying to make some seder in the world, not seger, you know, it's not to close things off, but rather to make seder olam, world order. That's what's happening now in the world. And instead of us having fear, we should be having emunah. We should be saying, and ol min vado, Hashem is trying to test us and see the koach of the emunah that we have, the koach of the tefillah that we have. We have to scream and shout our tefillah to Hashem. And then that merit, Bezrat Hashem, we will be meriting the Geulah very, very soon. It's coming. It's here. There's no question 
all the gdolim, this is not me saying this, all the gdolim are saying this, that right now is a time of tremendous, tremendous geula, tremendous, tremendous revelation of good, hopefully through this darkness. It says, me'at mina or docher bechoshech. We just had Hanukkah, and the light of Hanukkah is now distancing, distancing the choshech, pushing away the darkness. So even though Tevet is a month of difficult, challenging times, it's the beginning of the Puranut, of the destruction of the Bet HaMikdash began in Tevet. We're going to be commemorating Asara Bet Tevet, the 10th of Tevet, when the, the walls were breached to Shalim. There was a, you know, there was a siege. And here it's a time of, of darkness. It looks like it's the destruction of the Bet HaMikdash, the challenging situation of Kalei Yisrael happening now in the world. What's going on? What's going to be? And really, really what Hashem wants us to do is, I heard a beautiful vart, a beautiful Dvar Torah. It's the month of Tevet. So even though Tevet has this challenging time of the beginning of the destruction that happened during this time, and it's a very dark month, there's no holidays during this month, but we can change the Tevet to Tovot. How do we change the Tevet to Tovot, which means good? We add the Vav. The Vav, what is the Vav? A Vav in Hebrew means a hook. A Vav, a hook connects. It has the ability to connect one word to another. Vayigash, Vayelech, right? And, and. And we have the Vav, it's called the Vav HaChibur, the Vav of connection. If we utilize this time to connect to one another, to love one another, we try to promote with Lev Am everyday daily meditations of Avat Yisrael, of tremendous love for Klal Yisrael, no matter who they are, no matter where they are, to try to connect in our mind when we put in our mind that we are one, that we are all chalak elokam iman. We say to ourselves every day we try at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. In Israel, it's 5.30 p.m. And wherever you are, you can relate that time to you, but you could do it at any time throughout the day. Hareni mekabelet alai, we say. We didn't say it today, let's say it now. I accept upon myself today the mitzvah of loving every single fellow Jew. Like my heart and soul, that every one of every Jew is a part of Hashem's neshama. And that Jew, every single Jew is a part of me. And I have to love every single Jew. I have to say to myself, I love you just I love myself. I buy myself nice things. I feed myself nice things. I, you know, I, I try to do all the things for myself. We have to do the same thing for our brothers and sisters. And when we do this and we tap into this koach with our mindset, we have the power of the mind. When we join in our mindset to this tremendous koach of Ahava, we're able to tap into, it says in the energy waves, to 20,000 people. If you look at the symbol of Lev Ha'am, it's a tether, it's a Wi-Fi signal with a crown on it because we're able to tap into the highest level of the keter of Nucha, of the, of the crown of glory of Hashem because we're attaching ourselves to this Ahava. If we look at the gematria of Ahava, it's a gematria of 26, double Ahava is 26 which is the UK VAFK, the connection of Hashem. And yes, if somebody is saying we did have part of Hanukkah in the month of Tevet, that's right. But throughout the month, we don't have any other Yamim Tovim. But you're right, we do have Hanukkah during this month. And so we try to tap into this love, this Ahavat Yisrael, because why was the Beit HaMikdash destroyed? Because of Sinat Chinam. And what do we have to do now? To be metaken, to fix it? Ahavat Chinam. We have to love each other just because, just because you know who you are. And in that way, we're spreading more light and we're being victorious. Let me tell you, it's so challenging. Sometimes people do certain things or say certain things to us and we just want to scream and yell and what? How could you do this thing to me? What are you talking about? Who are you? Who do you think you are? And you want to just answer back because anybody who holds himself back and doesn't answer back is able to bring this world to existence. 
He allows the world to exist. That's what Chazal tell us. Yesed ha'aretz al blima. Blima means on what? Nothing. On nothing. On what? Yesed ha'aretz al blima. On bolem. It could be bolem at peep. On one who is closing his mouth, preventing himself from answering back when somebody embarrassed him or put him down. And when we do this, we bring tremendous kwaq of ahava and of dan le kafzchut, being dan le kafzchut, of being, of judging favorably. And oh boy, when we start doing this, are we challenged? And this is the victory. The victory, like Miriam was saying, to overcome a yetzerara, to try to tap into the kafot that we have, to daven, to ask Hashem to help us in this challenging time when this person is saying certain things to us that are challenging. To, to utilize the tools that we have to be able to battle and to combat the Yetzirah is trying to get us to answer back, fight back. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get her. I'm going to show them. And instead, to be able to say, Gavzula Tova, thank you, Hashem, for this opportunity of challenging me, of putting me in a situation where I, you know, my buttons get to be pressed. When do we work on ourselves? When do we work on ourselves? Only when we're challenged. When things are good, I was talking about this the other day. In the morning, I could say your chesed, praise you, Hashem, thank you. It's so beautiful. It's light outside. It's so nice outside. The sun is shining. Everything is going well for me. Thank you, Hashem. That's when we have chesed. But at night, is a time when we have to have, in the darkness, we have to have emuna. When things don't look so so bright and cheery is when we have to have our emuna. Let's hold on to the light of Hanukkah, ladies. Let's hold on to the victorious light that the, that the Maccabim chose to hold on to. And they were so few and they weren't even strong and they didn't have an army and they didn't have weapons, but they did have, says, Ele barechev, Ele basusim. they're with their chariots, they're with their horses and we, v'anachnu, Hashem, Hashem, Elokeinu, Naskir. We are, we have Hashem, Hashem to be mentioning His name, and we daven with the name of Hashem. We have a tremendous koach. And what did they go and say? The Maccabim. They said, "Me, la Hashem, Eli, who is for Hashem? Come with me." And that's why they were called Maccabim. Me, kamocha ba'elim Hashem, who is like you and all the gods Hashem, because they were the warriors of Hashem. I challenge you to be the warrior for Hashem. Who is going to stand up and say in his home, in his community, in his circle, in her circle of friends, Mila Hashem Eli, there's so many kids lost out there. There's so many people suffering. Pick up the phone. Show them that you care. Tell them how much you love them. Tell them, ask them if you can do anything for them. Don't say, what can I do for you? Offer them. Can I make you a cake? Would you like to come for a Shabbos? Can I help you with something you're going through? Maybe it's challenging what's happening in your house. Can I babysit for your kids? Whatever you can do, offer something. Be in the army of Hashem and be in gratitude. Be in the army of Hashem yourself. Also, be in gratitude. Thank you, Hashem. I know you love me. I know you're giving me this opportunity to challenge me so that I can grow, so I can stretch. I want to be in your army, Hashem. Ladies, we are already in the army of Hashem. Hashem put us in this generation and the generation of, of a Mashiach, because he expects more from us and he knows we can handle it. Let's live up to our expectation. Let's grow. Let's love each other more. Let's learn a little more. Let's up our davening a little more. Let's care for another a little more. This whole pandemic is supposed to change us. Hashem wants something from us. We don't want to look back and say, mm, I wish I would have done that differently. Mm, I wish I would have forgiven her or I wish I would have davened, or I wish I would have forgiven her and, and, done, and judged her favorably. And I wish I would have done that thing, that mitzvah. Every time you do a mitzvah, there's a tremendous light. I remember hearing a story from somebody who was mitgayel, from a convert. And they said that they would see the Jewish people. I think it was in, maybe in Mexico, I don't remember where. They would see the Jewish people they saw always when they saw a Jewish person, it was a light glowing around them. Every time they would see a Jewish person, they would see this light. Obviously, this person had a special neshama. He was able to see things. But they saw the light around the Jew. And every time they do a mitzvah, I think they did a study. There was a professor 
Gedolim that, that did, maybe not Gedolim, Rabbanim that did a study that every time somebody puts on tefillin, there's a certain kind of light that changes. There's an aura that changes around that person. Every time you give tzedakah, you're creating more light. Every time you're judging favorably, you're creating more light. Every time you're in gratitude, you're creating more light. You utter tefillah and you don't feel like saying it. You're creating more light. According to the pain, so is the reward. If you would know how much light you're bringing to the world and how you're helping to bring the geula, you would be running. said, I want that tov and chesed should run after me my whole entire life because he understood the power of every single mitzvah. Let us utilize this time in the month of Tevet to create tovot, to create good things, good deeds, good tefillot, good opportunities of serving Hashem with chesed, with gratitude, with being victorious, not letting the yetzerara win over us. And if it did, that's okay. We're human too. Don't beat yourself up. Get up again. Shev ha'ipol tzadik the kam, the greatness of a tzadik. So he gets up and he gets up again and he gets up again. Seven times. Shev ha'ipol tzadik the kam, the greatness of a tzadik. That he gets up. So ladies, stand up tall. Stand up tall. Get up. And even if you feel lousy, and even if you didn't do what you should have done, it could have done and would have done. There's no such thing in the Hebrew language. Could have, should have, would have. Sir Liba has a song like that. Could have, should have, would have. Uh-uh. There's no such word. There's no such thing. It happened. It was meant to happen. And now I'm moving on. I'm going to do, I'm going to get better next time. I'm going to do better next time. My, I'm in the middle of Shemona Esther and I caught myself. I'm going to talk about this in tefillah. Don't give up. Do it, try again. The next feel, I catch the next feel, I catch the next one. Whatever you can have to fill up your bank, to create tovot. Let's make this month, this month of Tevet tovot. And may we be zochre bezrat Hashem that this asarab Tevet should not be a day of, of mourning and of, of fasting. It should be a day of bezrat Hashem Yeshuot for Am Yisrael, for the Geula, bezrat Hashem. May we be zochet to see it in the Rabbi Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for the opportunity of letting me share and Miriam Yerushalmi letting her share. And um, I welcome you all, Bezrat Hashem, to my series on Tefillah. I'm going to be posting it in the groups and you can feel free to reach out to me. I'm going to put my number in the chat right now. And if anybody has a question, I'll just take it. I just. Uh, you can get open the floor to anybody who wants to ask anything. Just have to keep it short. Thank you. Thank you. If anybody wants to join, just um, my, any of my chats. I have a Chizuk Inspiration chat and I have a Thank You Hashem group. It's not a chat, it's a group that we talk about um, the I'm sorry that everybody says notes just to thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. And, um, you know, and there's no posting of, you know, just chatting back and forth. It's just uh, gratitude. Uh, thank you, Hashem. Chat. Thank you, Karen. It was for such a beautiful program today. It was thank beautiful. You. Thank the you. The singing so and Miriam, and you, it was just beautiful. Hashem. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank, thank you, you Karen. Karen. This was amazing. And then, uh, it's called a lot for uh, the month of Tove. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Tavot, tavot. Wow. We need it. You are an amazing teacher. Thank you. Thank you so much. I miss you. I miss you guys. I'm happy we got the opportunity. We are trying to get it together, me and Miriam, and we said that's it. We're doing it today, even though I, I'm running for the Shabbat Brachas for Hashem, and. Uh, I get a mazel tov. I'm in my new apartment. Oh, Hashem. Mazel tov. Shina makam, shina mazel. Oh, mazel tov. Wow. Mazel tov. Thank you so much. Mazel Hashem, we'll make a chanukah to buy here. The next one. This is the, uh, you know, I just signed. I, I came quickly to sign. That's so why I wasn't able to be on the Zoom at the beginning. But quickly signed my lease. And Chaz uh, Hashem, now um, I'm in my apartment. Hopefully, Mazel Hashem. Beginning of uh, next month. I'm going to make a chanukah to buy and uh, welcome all of you to an amazing shiur exactly. then. But before then, you'll hear from me. We're going to start our series in tefillah. I need it as much as you do. So uh, I'm really excited about it.
But I see a lot of my friends are here. Thank you all for joining. Thank you all. Zelda, I see you're here. Thank you so much. Hi. Great to see you. Naomi Orly, Priscilla, thank you so much for coming on. Rhonda. Yeah, my pleasure. Rhonda, thank you. Love to see you guys. Put on your camera so I can say hi. <laughs> Until next time, stay tuned to our next Zoom. I'm just going to end the recording.